Let's get this out of the way right now. No, we have not found alien jellyfish. Sorry if that's what you were thinking coming in here. This is a video about these. Jellyfish galaxies. Galaxies found in groups or clusters of galaxies in our universe that are losing gas to their surroundings in a process that results in these long tails of gas, dust, and in some particularly impressive examples, even newborn stars. My name is Thomas Rintoul, I'm a PhD researcher in astrophysics at Cardiff University, and in this video we're going to talk about where we find these jellyfish galaxies, then we'll discuss the processes that give them their jellyfish-like tails, and then we'll round out the video talking about why jellyfish galaxies are really important for galaxy evolution more generally. But before we go any further, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't miss future videos. It's a common misconception that space is empty. In reality, the space between planets, stars, and even galaxies is anything but. Between the planets of our solar system, we find asteroids, comets, and the subatomic particles that make up the solar wind. Between stars, we have the interstellar medium, that's gas and dust that might one day form a brand new generation of stars. And around and between galaxies, we have vast quantities of very hot, very thin gas that, depending on exactly where you find it, we either call the circumgalactic medium around a galaxy, the intracluster medium between galaxies in a cluster, or the intergalactic medium beyond that. In this video, we're going to talk mostly about galaxy clusters, so we'll mostly talk about the intracluster medium, or the ICM. The ICM is essentially all the stuff that fills the void between galaxies in a galaxy cluster, a grouping of galaxies that all interact with each other through gravity and move together through the universe. But looking at some of these images, there doesn't seem to be very much there, and, you know, you'd be right. The ICM is incredibly thin. In this glass of water, which is about 300 millilitres in volume, or 300 grams in mass, there are, approximately speaking, 10 to the power of 25 molecules of water. That's one with 25 zeros after it. And each of those molecules is about 18 times the mass of a single hydrogen atom. Let's compare this to the gas, the fluid that makes up the intracluster medium. It's mostly hydrogen, and it's incredibly hot. At the cool end, it's about 10,000 degrees Celsius. At the high end, it can reach the tens to hundreds of millions of degrees Celsius. Because it's so hot, it's very thin, very low density. And if I was able to grab some ICM and put it in this glass, chances are there wouldn't be a single particle in this glass. If instead I took this two liter Coke Zero bottle, other soft drinks are available, and filled it up with the ICM, there would only be about two particles in this entire thing. The ICM is very, very thin. It explains why you can see through it so easily. But despite it being so thin, I'm going to tell you that the ICM is the reason we get jellyfish galaxies. It does this through a process called ram pressure stripping. It's a fluid process, and it's probably easiest to show you this with a practical demo. Ram pressure is something we encounter every day in our daily lives, especially if you do any sort of active travel, for example, on a bike. When cycling, you feel the force of the air against your face. We call this a headwind, or a drag force, in normal life. In physics, it's called a ram pressure. To understand this, we need to talk about what a force really is. You might remember this equation from school, F equals MA. The force on an object is the product of its mass and its acceleration. In our cycling example, that force comes from the fact that air is being accelerated in a direction by hitting your face. If the air was otherwise stationary, it would be accelerated by your face, pushing it out of the way and accelerating it to the sides. If instead you pointed a hairdryer at your face, that deceleration would be from the air slowing down as it hits your face. With that oncoming air losing speed, decelerating, it loses what we call momentum, its ability to keep going in the direction it wants to go. That's all force is. It's a change in momentum. Exactly the same thing is happening in galaxy clusters. Galaxies move through this intracluster medium gas and feel a ram pressure, a headwind, from that gas. And this can have some very significant effects on those galaxies. But before we talk about what ram pressure can do to a galaxy, I just want to thank the people who make these videos 
possible. My patrons on Patreon. On screen are the names of my education in Nabler patrons. All patrons get early access to videos and an exclusive behind the scenes monthly vlog with tiers starting at only £3 per month. If you like what I do and want to support an independent science communicator, then please go to patreon.com forward slash thomasrintool to find out more. To understand how ram pressure can cause a galaxy to go from something like this to something like this, we need to talk about the biggest differences between a cyclist and a galaxy. You know, beyond size, mass, and the fact that cyclists don't form stars or have black holes at their centres normally. The main difference is that a cyclist is solid and a galaxy is not. Galaxies are collections of gas, stars, black holes and assorted other types of matter all held together by the collective pool of gravity of all of those things. What this means is that we now have a fight between the ram pressure from the ICM and the galaxy's own gravity. If the force from the ram pressure is stronger than the force from gravity trying to hold on to the gas, the ram pressure will win and the gas will be stripped off the galaxy and will start to form a tail. Gravity as a force isn't the same strength everywhere. It gets weaker with distance. A lot weaker. Because gravity is so much weaker far away from the centre of the galaxy, gas that's further away will be easier to strip with ram pressure. Specifically, the gas in a halo around the galaxy will be stripped first. This gas is part of the galaxy's circumgalactic medium, or CGM. This is the start of a process called outside-in stripping. The CGM is the most loosely bound gas in the galaxy, so it goes first. But while it's being removed, it protects the gas in the disk, the interstellar medium. So the galaxy disk won't really notice for a while. It'll still be spinning, still forming stars, all while this protective layer and its source of new fuel for star formation are ripped away. After the CGM is stripped, the interstellar medium is exposed to the ram pressure from the intracluster medium. If the galaxy is massive enough, this might not be a problem. Gravity might be enough to hold on to that ISM where it will keep forming stars with fuel it already has, but without getting much more now that it has no circumgalactic medium to act as a reservoir. Eventually, it will run out of fuel, it will stop forming stars, quenching the galaxy by starving it of new fuel. But what if it's not big enough to hold on to its interstellar medium? This is common in clusters because the galaxies tend to move very fast and ram pressure depends on both the density of the fluid, like how much stuff there is in a given volume, but also on the square of the speed of the galaxy relative to the gas. And because it's a square, a small increase in speed gives a much bigger increase in ram pressure. In a lot of cases, gravity just isn't strong enough to hold on to the interstellar medium. So this outside-in stripping continues, removing the much denser gas of the interstellar medium, removing that fuel for star formation, and quenching the galaxy that much faster. Once this gas is gone, the satellite is left to slowly lose its stars and become a quiescent galaxy, one that's not forming stars, sometimes called a red and dead galaxy. So it's sad really, looks cool, but not great for the jellyfish galaxy. But what about the other galaxies in the cluster? Let's talk about why ram pressure stripping of galaxies is important for the bigger central galaxies in clusters. Something you've got to understand about the gas inside a galaxy is that it's not all hydrogen. There's helium in there and then a load of heavier elements produced by stars and released into the interstellar medium when they reach the end of their lives. We call these metals in astronomy, and I'm actually working on a video all about the periodic table of astronomy and why we call these things metals, so subscribe for that in a few weeks' time. These heavy elements, they're important because they help gas cool down much more easily than if you had just a cloud of pure hydrogen. Stripping the ISM of a galaxy deposits these heavy elements, these metals, into the ICM, where they can help cool down gas in the ICM. That cool gas is then more easily able to fall onto other galaxies in the cluster, a process known as accretion. This accreted gas can then go on to form new stars in that larger galaxy, and likely more stars than we would have ever seen in the jellyfish galaxy if it had never been stripped. 
This is a really important part of the overall process of galaxy evolution, because in simulations published in a paper by Hopkins and collaborators, they found that if we don't include the cooling caused by metals in the gas around galaxies, we would only get about two-thirds of the stars that we actually see in galaxies. Who knows? Maybe if there weren't some satellite galaxies being stripped of their gas a few billion years ago, the Sun, the Earth, and all of us might just not be here. We are made of star stuff, after all. I hope you found all this interesting. This is something that I work on in my own research, and there is so much more I could talk about covering how we study these galaxies in simulations, or how magnetic fields play into all of this, but this video would be far too long and far too convoluted if I did that today. I am working on a scientific paper on this sort of stuff right now though, so when it's out in a few months time I'll make a video all about it. Make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't miss that. If you want to keep talking about science with fellow interested people, then take a look in the description down below for the link to our Discord server and keep the conversation going over there. If you're looking for something else to watch, here are some videos that I prepared earlier. Make sure to do the YouTube pleasantries on your way out. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.